So you might know the first reading and the third reading, every Sunday are always connected to each other. They always have a similar theme. Sometimes the theme is pretty easy to figure out, sometimes a little more subtle. The second reading is independent, different reading. We've been listening to James for about five weeks now. But the theme of the first and third readings, the true stories right out of the Bible, is those who are so self-righteous, they think they're better than others. So in the first reading, God told Moses to call 70 elders, 70 leading men of the community, and to distribute some of the governing functions on them. And he said, I'm going to pour the Holy Spirit upon them. So 70 were there, and the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. Wonderful. Along comes two other gentlemen who weren't in that original 70. They were outside for some reason. Maybe they were late. Strange names, Eldad, Medad. And all of a sudden, they were prophesying, just like the 70 who had received the Spirit, and self-righteous Joshua goes to Moses and stop them. They weren't in that original 70. Stop them from prophesying. They're not supposed to do that. And Moses said, wouldn't it be great if God gave the gift of prophecy to everybody? Why are you jealous? Because these two have joined you. Now, in the gospel reading, we have almost a, a similar account. We are told that John the Apostle saw some people driving out demons using the name of Jesus Christ. And they weren't among the 12 apostles. Maybe they weren't among the 72 disciples. And John is really upset. He goes to Jesus and said, we try to stop them. Isn't that right? Jesus said, no. Anyone who does anything good in my name, I don't care who they are, if they do things good in my name, they're on our side. If they're not against us, they're for us. Self-righteous. Now, we would think that that has long disappeared and it's not as bad as it used to be, at least when I was growing up as a child. The hostility between Catholics and Protestants was really big. Some of you, I'm sure, remember that. I grew up here in Las Vegas, and I was told as I was walking down the street and passed a Protestant church, Baptist, Methodist, whatever, I was supposed to cross and go on the other side of the street so I didn't walk in front of that church. What does that teach a little eight-year-old kid? There must be something evil in that church that's going to come out and get me. That's wrong. Here's a true story, a TV story. Some of you might remember Art Linkletter. He used to have this uh, program called House Party. And every once in a while, he'd invite children from around the Los Angeles area to be there. And this one particular day, he invited children from a Catholic school in L.A., and he asked the children, each one, tell me your favorite Bible story. And so they told different Bible stories. And one little girl said, my favorite Bible story is all about Adam and Eve. So she told the whole story of Adam and Eve, and they ate the forbidden fruit, and so on. So then Art Linkler says, well, what happened to them then? The little girl said, God punished them. OK. And Art Linkler said, how did God punish them? She said, God turned them into Protestants. Perfect training of a Catholic school in the 1950s. Terrible, isn't that? A joke. God is giving a tour of heaven to a wonderful Baptist man. Very holy, very kind. And they see this big building, and God says, tiptoe by it quietly. Shh. As they get past the building, the Baptist says, what was that all about? God said, in that room are all the Catholics. They think they're the only ones up here. And I could tell story after story, because I grew up that way, but thank God for St. John the 23rd, the Pope who started the Second Vatican Council. Its nickname was the Ecumenical Council, the council that was preaching Christ to all religions that are Christian, under that huge umbrella. Yes, we could say we're the original, we're the largest, but Baptists and Methodists and all others are doing the same thing. Imagine if I was at uh, Southern Hills Hospital, where I'm a chaplain, and I'm walking down one of the corridors there, and I see a Methodist minister praying in the name of Jesus over a sick person. Should I go and stop him? Hey, don't do that. You're not Catholic. You can't pray. Wouldn't that be awful? That's what Joshua wanted. That's what John wanted to do. Or if those who belong to the Mormon faith have set up a feeding table down where the homeless are. 
Are they wrong because they're feeding the hungry and they're not Catholic? You can't do that. Only Catholics. We have Catholic social services. No. So I think we have to realize that we have so much more in common with all other Christian religions than we do in difference. And they are our sisters and brothers in Christ. And every pope since John the 23rd, Paul the 6th, John Paul 1, John Paul 2, Benedict, Francis, have taught the same thing. We need to expand our understanding of our fellow Christians. Of all Christian teachings and doctrines, we probably agree on 90%. The other 10%, we have different ideas. We have a pope, they don't. We do things during Lent, they don't. They do things, you know, other days. Small, usually man-made laws. And yet wars have been fought over that. The war in Ireland between Catholics and Protestants was horrible till that Good Friday treaty that has been now in effect for 20, 30 years now. Thank God. And so I think we need to examine our consciences as well. Do we accept all people who believe in Christ as children of God? People of all religions. We are all made in God's image and likeness. Every one of us is a gift from God. In the story of creation, after Adam and Eve, all the human race symbolically is descended from them. So God created the first humans, and we are all their descendants. So we are God's plan, God's children. We need to accept one another and love one another. Oh, we can agree to disagree. We might be miles apart in some of our doctrines and teachings. That's no reason to hate, no reason to fight, no reason to kill. So that lesson Moses tried to teach the people 3,000 years ago, Jesus tried to teach of all of that 2,000 years ago, and we're still working at it. In the name of religion, in the name of God, horrible things are still being done in our world. And one of the most persecuted religions in the world is the Catholic faith. Catholics all over the world, especially parts of the Middle East, are persecuted. Their churches robbed and burned down. That is wrong. Whoever you call God, that is simply wrong. So let's examine our own conscience and realize that we must love one another. Didn't Jesus say, love your enemy? And I'm not saying Protestants are our enemy. I'm just saying they are Christians of a different fold. Jesus said that I have sheep that belong to another flock. We could say, well, we're the Catholic flock, then there's a Protestant flock, and so on. Let's be open to accept all people in Jesus' name. That's what he wants. Now, the second part was rather dramatic. Cutting off your hand, chopping off your foot, plucking out your eyes. Again, Jesus was exaggerating. He's saying, if you have a major problem, you need a major solution. So that's what he's saying. He wasn't saying, really, you know, maim your body. You know, we exaggerate all the time. I think I've told you this before. But I said, when I finish Mass, I'm going to go home and eat because I am so hungry I could eat a horse. Do you take me literally? Although I had horse meat once in France, but normally I wouldn't eat it. I certainly wouldn't eat a whole horse. But what was I messaging, I was saying, I'm starved. So that's what Jesus is saying. Pluck out your eye, cut off your hand, cut off your words. If it's a drastic problem, a moral problem, get major help. It's like if you have a gaping wound, a Band-Aid's not going to work. You need surgery. You need stitches, whatever it might be. So look at some of the problems that we have. If you have a spiritual problem, maybe it's an addiction to alcohol or drugs or pornography or whatever. Maybe you need to go to a 12-step program. Maybe you need to go to treatment. Maybe you need to go to a therapist. You really need to face a problem head on and say, this is a big problem, and if I just let it go, it'll, it'll continue and continue and continue. I need help. And that's the most humbling thing any of us can say. I'm in trouble. I need help. Will you help me? So strong messages in the readings today. Love everyone, especially those who are under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. And if you have a serious problem, mental, physical, moral, spiritual, get serious help. Go to help. Our friend is Jesus Christ. He only challenges us because he loves us.